welcome back to the Doomer Optimism podcast. Um, Willow and I are here as co-hosts with um, the famous, infamous Tiger Lily. Um, so today we're just going to get started sort of talking about motherhood. There's this, there's this phenomenon that seems to be popping up of um, based mommies. Um, and I just figured we need to have more <laughs> conversations with women where we can like sort of occupy the space of, um, you know, like what, what is a healthy approach to, to motherhood to, um, and, and I think not just motherhood and, and like child rearing and parenting, but health in relation to all of those things, you know, I think, um, health maxing mommies, um, could be a thing. So, um, so I think maybe to get started, Tiger Lily, maybe you can talk a little bit about, um, your, I don't know, maybe first introduce yourself and uh, how you want to be known for this conversation. Then we can get into the conversation about your, your pregnancy and um, labor and delivery. Yeah. Well, I, um, I guess I go by Tiger Lily on online. Um, I started out with just a, a Twitter and then um, I've been banned, I think, five times. And I always come back <laughs> just to talk about <laughs> normally health stuff um and now based mommy stuff because I've been a mom for officially four weeks Yay! so um yeah it's been an amazing life-changing I mean anyone who becomes a mom knows it's just like your life will never be the same it's the craziest like it's a it's a rebirth too so like mm. your baby's born and then you're born into a new person as well so it's been um it's been amazing and i i'm so excited that we're going to talk about birth and um home birthing and like bring in all the holistic health stuff because i'm was passionate about it before but now after actually having a home birth and having my baby it's like it's my whole entire life and i just want women to know that there's other options besides hospital births especially in the you know, the world of like COVID right now too. Totally. Um, so um, I guess, or so, go ahead, Willow. Yeah, no, I was just going to ask, um, be, I'd be interested to get into the, I guess, the more specifics, but I'm wondering if you could just talk a bit for now about um, like what that transformation was like for you of the kind of like being, being reborn after childbirth. Uh, I, that resonated a lot with me and I just wanted to no, hear your, hear your perspective on that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cause you're, this just happened to you. You just had your first baby yeah, five, uh, five a and couple a half months, months ago. ago. Yeah. She's five and a half months. It's already been five and a half mm-hmm. months. Oh my gosh. I feel like you just messaged that you gave birth. It's crazy. <laughs> um, man, it's honestly, it's so hard to put into words. And I, I've been obsessed with birth my whole life. Like I always wanted to be a mom and I always knew I wanted to have babies and that it would change my life when it happened, but you can't like explain it until it happens to you. And pregnancy itself was this whole thing. And honestly, my pregnancy was, was kind of, um, I, it was, it was a long pregnancy and I didn't have any complications, but it was just, it's exhausting being pregnant for nine months. Mm -hmm. I mean, nine months is a long time. It's pretty much 10 months. Except for getting COVID Um, early on. Right. Yes. And I got COVID at 15 weeks. And then my whole first trimester, I was so sick. I was the mom that was like puking every five minutes. <laughs> oh God. And so um, it was horrible. And then last trimester, you know, it was like, you're just waiting every day and it gets longer and longer and longer. Um, but man, after I had her because of our home birth, which um, I'll go into It was the scariest, most amazing thing that happened to me. And once you give birth that way, you feel like you can do anything and you kind of can't believe that your body just did what it did Mm -hmm. on its own, basically. Um, And then when you see your baby that you made for nine months, you're like, wow, that's who was in there that entire time. And you just, there's like this shift in your entire world that everything that mattered doesn't matter as much and it's just what matters is your baby yeah and just the process of birth is so transformative and it I you just feel like you were born too with your baby 
and I I wish I had more like mm-hmm. poetic perfect words for it <laughs> but it's just it's crazy like you ha- you can't you can't know unless it happens to you one thing that uh surprised me a lot after like not just after birth but after like the coming the months after birth was that and I feel like I I wanted to say this because I think it's something I had a bit of like weird feelings around but like I I kind of expected that like when your my baby would be born I would just like like all the love I was gonna have for her for her whole life would just be there already and obviously you have this Mm -hmm. huge rush of like love for your baby but what really kind of surprised me was how like I feel like I just like as like every every single day that I have her I'm like like I'm just like oh my god I didn't think I could love her more and then she like then then, like like you just have all these more moments and as they like gain awareness and start to like see you more it's like your your love for your child just like grows so much and I was like it was like it was truly mind-blowing and I think that it was hard at f- like, I think I had more moments at first where I was like, I'm just so exhausted. I just need a moment where I'm like, not with this. Like I like, I would have my husband take her out and I would just like sleep and have him like hang out with her in the living room while I, while I slept on my own. And um, it was, it's been very cool, not just to like, obviously be out of the intense exhaustion period, but also now be like, wow, I just don't need that anymore I think it's partially because she's more aware but it's just really yeah. cool to watch how like your relationship the love compounds and the, yeah it's like it just I I didn't think like I don't think I've had the experience before of like that kind of like your heart just like swells and expands and your love just grows for this baby and I'm like how is I just don't I just don't like I'm like how how is like where is this gonna go is this just gonna keep happening forever <laughs> right that it is does. so that it is does. true and that's not I feel like it must yeah. well and this is the other yeah. thing yeah and that's not of, talked about as much yeah oh sorry um the other thing is when you have more than one too it's like when I had my first I was like I just I love her so much I can't imagine like loving a sibling as much as I love this kid because I'm like she's my first kid I'm gonna love her the most I'm just sure of it and then the second one comes and you're like no there's room like that I don't know how people say like your heart expands but like um it really is amazing your capacity for love and I think I think a lot of people like in our modern lives we just have no um like prototypes or or people modeling this um or talking about it really um the that kind of relationship and and how sacred it is and and how expansive it is and how meaningful it is you know I think um in general it's like it's so surprising when you become a mom and then then it's one of those things you can't unlearn you're just like oh I've been through this and now now I'm just like a warrior for like (laughs) healthy mother right daughter bonds because I'm just and and parent bonds because I just feel like I can't unlearn this like attachment that I have to this creature and um I feel like I should be fostering as many healthy relationships as possible um so okay I love that so um maybe we should talk a little bit about like did you ever did you ever think um like sort of more mainstream about pregnancy and childbirth did you have like a transformation to thinking about more natural pregnancy and childbirth or were you always kind of of that orientation even before getting pregnant like what sort of red pilled you on natural childbirth honestly I was always growing up I I knew I wanted to be a mom but the idea of birth did freak me out. Um, and I was just like, okay, that's going to be horrible because you see the videos of women screaming and their water breaks. And it's like this big traumatic, um, medical emergency is what our brains are trained to think earth is, is okay. I'm going to have to go to the hospital. This is going to be a huge, a huge traumatic ordeal. Um, and then probably seven years ago, I had to kind of I had this horrible, um, like my body kind of just broke down on me because I had just ran it into the ground, like with stress and with Mm. eating tons of shit. And I, um, 
I started having wicked panic attacks and I was losing my hair. I got super underweight and I went to the doctor and they were like, oh, you just need Xanax and Zoloft like (laughs) they typically do. Yeah. And I remember, I remember when she said that I was like, wow, like I really get why people get addicted to, um, pharmaceutical drugs and their sickness is just swept under the rug and so that like really pissed me off and I went on this whole journey of holistic health and figured out it was my thyroid and that's when I got into herbs uh, that helped heal my thyroid and so once you kind of have a bad experience with um, the medical world you would never go back. I mean, you're just jaded forever and I have been. So once I hit that point, I kind of started hearing a little bit more about home births and I wasn't obviously in a place where I, like I hadn't even met my husband yet, anything. Um, but in the back of my head, I thought, okay, I would do a home birth. And then, um, yeah. And then I met my husband we got, we got pregnant, which was a total surprise, the best surprise ever. And it was right during COVID. So in Texas, where I live, I live in Austin, um, hospitals were making women give birth in masks and you could only have your one, uh, person in there. And that's if you tested negative, like if for some reason you tested positive, you had to give birth alone and they're in hazmat suits and it's this, this ridiculous thing. And at that time I knew it was going to be peak. Like people were just going to be insane about it. And I said, absolutely not. This is my first baby, my first birth. I want to have like as much control of the experience as possible and be safe in my home with my husband and my mom. And so, um, thankfully Austin has this amazing home birth community. We have incredible midwives, we have doulas and and uh, my chiropractor was like, I have an amazing midwife um, who is like-minded with you. So she was like anti-COVID vax and wouldn't push anything on me. And that was important to me too, because I am such a freak. I was like, I don't even want somebody that's like been vaccinated around me, <laughs> my baby. <laughs> and so, which people are, most people are not that hardcore. I'm just an extremist, but, um, I, uh, yeah. So I just had the most perfect people around me. And then my doula, Emily, I actually met through, um, Josh Rayner on, on Twitter, the, our raw meat friend on Twitter. Oh, I love him. Um, he was like, yes, he's amazing. And he was like, I have a friend who left LA and moved to Austin. She's a doula. And so we connected and like, just we hit it off right away and so she was here at my birth and it was awesome I I basically what made me have a home birth was what pushed me into it was the COVID restrictions that I would have had at hospital and I am almost so glad that that happened yeah Willow what was your experience like did I don't even know you had a home birth right I did I had a home birth at my mom's house because we live uh uh, way too far away in the country for or like yeah in, in, in Ontario or Quebec where I gave birth you have to have like you have to be within 20 minutes of the hospital for them to do a home birth oh is that your baby no it's my cat <laughs> okay <laughs> what, what sound was um, that <laughs> sorry yeah you have to be within 20 minutes of a hospital to do a home birth so we did it at my mom's house um my I mean I honestly ne- never would have thought to do otherwise I guess like my my uh, my mom had us all at home um my parents are like kind of granola hippies already and so I just just <laughs> that's what I what I grew up with um but uh yeah I was lucky to find um we had been attending an orthodox church uh kind of on and off for a while and I actually met my midwife at church before like before I was even married before we got pregnant like by like a couple years I think and um I, she had just said she was a midwife and I was like oh cool and then I remembered that when I got pregnant and I like found her and called her and it was weird because she worked on the like uh she worked um not in Quebec but no she, she lived in in not in Quebec but she worked in Quebec which is like a crazy coincidence which is where my mom lives and where I gave birth so so yeah it was really 
really nice, like having, having someone who, um, I knew through, uh, like just, just like I knew already. Cause I was so nervous about like finding somebody just like cold, like just like cold emailing, like midwifery clinic. Uh, like, I know. Like, and, like, it's, just and it's, such a, it's such a personal thing. Like you really do need to yeah. feel like you have a connection with the people. Yeah. And you know, I like, I even struggled a bit with it because, uh, so in on, in, in most parts of Canada, um, midwifery is covered by our healthcare system. Um, which is great in some respects because it's free. Like I never paid anything for it, mm-hmm. but, uh, except in my taxes, right. um, but, um, <laughs> but I, uh, but the nice, the, yeah, the rough thing is, is that it's, it's very, it feels very medical still. So it's like, they have to follow all these rules still. And, right. um, yeah. They, I don't remember. I think they were, I think some of them were wearing masks during the birth. They were supposed to, she definitely didn't the whole time. Okay. Um, and I told my midwife, I was like, I'm going to want to see your face. And she was like, I understand. <laughs> um, but, uh, but like, you know, like technically they were only allowed to have, uh, there was like a limit on the a number of people I was allowed to have there in, in the home. And she was like, she was like, look, I don't care, <laughs> um, which was nice. But, uh, but it is like all my appointments were in like a birthing center, which just felt like a community. It was, it just didn't feel like, uh, it didn't feel like homey. And it was like, I wanted, I like had, I had read Ina May's Guide to Childbirth and I had this like kind of idyllic vision of like what midwifery would be like. And it was like a little more medical Sterile. than that. My yeah. midwife was wonderful, but like she was still working in that system. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I almost like there's more regulation is going to lead to more like almost institutionalization of the, yeah. of it. But, um, okay. So I'll just briefly, uh, yeah. share my story too, since we're, we're going around and I think maybe it's good to, to, to do, um, my first was born in a hospital, but the, the, um, the practitioner I was working with was a family practice, um, doctor. And this was in 2013. And she was like, so hands off. Um, she basically just sat there. And the hospital was very, very hands off and like basically was non-interventionist at all. And I just got so lucked out because I, I knew a little bit at that time, but not to the extent that I do now. Um, And so that was, that was an awesome birth. My second birth was in a hospital and it was very interventionist. Like they cut the cord, even though I like immediately, even though I told them not to like all this kind of stuff, they, the bit, my babies are always big and they made the baby take formula because she was big. I'm like, this is so stupid. Like this kind of thing. They were like, if you don't give her formula, we're taking her away and putting her in the NICU, that kind of really annoying stuff. I'm like, oh my God. And then the third one was here in Uruguay. And I had learned that, um, that if your baby's above a certain size here in Uruguay, it's just like automatic (laughs) C-section. And I'm like, uh, my first baby was 10 pounds, 12 ounces. And my second, oh my I know my first and my, my husband and I were both huge babies. So it's like, it's genetics. Um, and you know, not like any, um, issues or whatever. And then the, the second was 10 pounds. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to go to the hospital and just guarantee a C-section because I'm way bigger than like Uruguayans are in general. And then my babies are big for Americans. Um, so I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a home birth. And then luckily, um, my third was born in March, 2020, which was like the beginning of the pandemic. And I was like, thank God I am not in a hospital right now. Like they were, they were separating babies from moms, like, because they didn't know whether or not moms could have had COVID. They didn't even have testing capacity at that time. Um, and I was like, this is just like a total dystopian nightmare if I would have been in a hospital here. Total, total dystopian. Um, and But I think Wild. the other thing that might be worth talking about for all of us is I don't know how much exposure you guys have to like the mainstream way of doing things or uh, talking to other mothers who have gone through the hospital system, but I've I've been exposed quite a lot to this system. And I don't know if it's worth going into a little bit, but like um, some of the some of the bad things that happen to women along the process of pregnancy and um, labor and delivery in the standard system is kind of horrifying. And I don't know, I'm sure you have thoughts on this, Tiger Lily. I just feel like it's sometimes worth saying out loud because I think a lot of women 
and and couples they get pregnant they don't even think like there is an alternative and they don't even think about yeah. what the risks are oh my gosh I have so many thoughts <laughs> <laughs> I have too many it's um man women really don't know and I I use the strong word abuse because truly it especially here in the states I'm not sure about where you guys are but so many women experience abuse um, in the hospital settings when they give birth and then their first experience of birth is traumatic and they they know they're gonna have to just do it again for each birth because they don't think there's other options and um it's really sad I mean every single medical intervention starting from ultrasounds to you have to do all of these things you have to do the the diabetes test where you drink the the toxic orange drink and um, they make you feel like you have to do these things. There's no other option. Uh, right. Same with getting induced. I mean, my friend, she's a nurse uh, in Colorado here, labor and delivery. And she says almost every single woman that comes in to give birth is induced. I know. Uh, my, some sister, reason. my sister-in-law is a labor and delivery nurse. She said over 90% of women in the hospital get induced to start their labor. Exactly. Why? And, and it's surprised common. that the C-section rate isn't higher, honestly, given right, that. Right. I mean, so the, the alternative for people who are like relatively new to natural birth or, or haven't had pregnancy yet, or haven't been pregnant yet, like your body will naturally go into labor. And I think part, part of the thing is yes. that we live in a culture where um, people want control. And they can't handle not having control. And and birth, childbirth is the yeah. ultimate letting go of control. <laughs> and so it's oh really God, like, yes. it is really like an exercise in letting go and like trusting in your body and trusting in your power. And there's just almost no language for that, for like the modern yeah. woman, you know? And so what happens is like, I've been, you know, with friends or peers who are like at that end part of their pregnancy and they're sick of being pregnant and their their practitioners saying you know at 39 weeks I can um I can induce you let's schedule it and they're like okay yeah I'll be ready I'll, I'll I, I'm 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 sick of being pregnant so yeah let's do it and that's basically how it goes it's really just behind closed doors practitioners offer it and mothers are like yeah I want to know the date you know, they yeah. want to schedule things. And then it becomes this thing where you start one intervention. Now I'm like, <laughs> I have like my ranting voice on you. You start one intervention and like there's cascading effects of that because your body isn't quite ready to have the baby. Um, yeah. Then you have like, okay, now the labor stalled quote unquote, but it's really, it's not really stalled. You're artificially starting it. And then the women are like stressed out because um, using Pitocin, which is the, the, um, the, the medicine they use to get the, the labor going, which is like a, a artificial synthetic. oxy, yeah, synthetic oxytocin, oxytocin yeah. um, it hurts, it hurts your body a lot. Um, and so then you get an epidural and then there are sometimes complications from that. Um, and then sometimes your baby gets like sluggish, sluggish or has a, has a lowered heart rate because of the epidural and all the medicine they're pumping into your body. Um, and then they're like, oh my gosh, there's a slow heart rate. I guess we gotta do a C-section. So it becomes this thing where like one intervention leads to another, leads to another. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm ranting. I took over for you. Tiger Lily, go ahead. Tiger Lily, do you want to tell? No. I, love it. I love it because I, oh my gosh, that is just, I was, it is crazy. And we're picking our baby's birthdays. It's like, we're not letting them come into the world mm -hmm. when they're ready. And your body goes into labor when your baby's lungs are complete. And so when we when we take the synth synthetic oxytocin, we're telling our bodies, okay, we're going into labor. Your body's not ready. And then just like you said, you have to have a C-section and that is a, is a whole thing. Your body, your baby's not coming through the birth canal. So it's not getting that first huge dose of good bacteria. And that causes gut problems later. Your baby also comes out. People, doctors don't tell you this, but and when you get an epidural, it's fentanyl. And so your baby comes out drugged immediately. So they don't latch mm -hmm. as well. And that also cascades into the whole, uh, it's hard for women to breastfeed. And it, it really, it shouldn't be 
breastfeeding is hard. Oh my gosh, obviously it's a full-time job, <laughs> but um, it makes it so much harder than it needs to be. And it breaks my heart for moms because when you have a baby, the second you give birth, I mean, your body goes into, it runs on adrenaline. It's in survival mode immediately after, which is why, like you said before, you don't immediately like completely fall in love with your baby because your brain is in, I'm keeping this baby alive. I'm keeping myself alive. Mm -hmm. I just had something come out of my vagina <laughs> and it takes yeah. a couple of days. And I didn't know that either. It's not something that is talked about. And there's, there's so much that is not talked about that should be talked about. So I love that we're doing this podcast. <laughs> um, Tyler, Lily, do you want to tell your birth story? Because it was very unusual. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, I would love to. I, so my midwife, um, we did one ultrasound at, I think it's at 20 weeks. Is it the anatomy scan? Mm -hmm, yeah where they, you make sure that your baby has 10 fingers and 10 toes yeah. and yeah. they check your baby's heart and organs. Um, and I didn't want to do any more ultrasounds after that. So during that ultrasound, baby was breech. So I knew that she was breech, but- And that's I, very early for that. Yeah. That's pretty normal. Right. Right. I was like, okay, it wasn't on my mind. I thought I had so much time. Um, and so my midwife can tell, they can kind of like check your stomach and when mm -hmm. the baby gets bigger, they can see, you know, positions of where they are. And so we knew I was even at 34 weeks, baby was still breech. And so I started doing all of the, um, the tricks, like you can stand on your head in a pool, mm -hmm. you can oh my God, go to the chiropractor yes. and uh, do what you can put peppermint oil on the top of your stomach and then a heating <laughs> pad on the bottom. I mean, there's so many tricks. Were you, on that, were you on that spinning babies website? Yes. And spinning babies is such an amazing resource. I mean, I did, I really tried to do everything. Oh, wait, um, let me just, but in case people are like completely lost on um, pregnancy and childbirth, breach is when the baby sort of flipped around. Um, mm -hmm. They're supposed to come out head first, but if your their feet are down, then typically in the U.S. right now, they, they automatic C-section. Um, so, and there are very, very few midwives or doctors who will take on the quote unquote medical risk of delivering a baby who's in this position feet first. Yeah. That just the context. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, that's perfect. And uh, in Austin, there are no doctors that will in the oh. entire city. Um, there's not a single doctor that will take you in the hospital hospital and let you deliver a breech baby vaginally um and that's it's ridiculous and then in other states like california and florida if you have a home birth and your baby is breech it's illegal for your midwife to help you deliver so your baby oh my god uh. so they can lose their license um if your baby's breech and you have had your midwife with you they have to make you go to the hospital um and that's the other part that is like it puts midwives in this position where they can't choose the mother and the baby. They have to be loyal to their license and to the state. And they, they hate that of course, um, because the mom's not getting to birth the way that she wants to. Um, the state is getting to decide. And it's, uh, it's something that absolutely has to change, but thankfully in Texas, um, there are no regulations around that. Um, and, and same, even in California, if you go past, um, I think if you go past 40 weeks, you have to go to the hospital too. So they put limitations on even when you can go into labor in your own home. Yeah. And um, there's so many, there's so many ridiculous laws. Obviously California is the, the worst <laughs> with home births, but. And the, um, and the logic so behind anyways. a lot of these logs, sorry to interrupt again, the logic behind them is li liability. So it's just like such a litigious yes. culture so that like they're trying to protect the, the practitioners from getting sued, but then it just, it like has this cascading effect on all of society because it just like determines what we think of as a safe thing because we're just so risk averse because people don't want to get sued. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, that's so true. And doctors, OBGYNs will protect themselves in the hospital over a mom and a baby. <laughs> like we're not put first ever. And um, I'm so thankful for my birth team because my midwife, her name's Lauren, and she she had never been at a breach 
birth before. So when my baby was breached at 34 weeks, we had a conversation of if my baby is still breached, when I go into labor, what are we going to do? Right. Um, right. And so there's this podcast called Birthing Instincts, and he's an OBGYN who does uh, breach twin home births and breach twin births. Oh my God. Um, and he basically says breach is just a variation of normal. It's not a medical emergency, and we shouldn't have to go get a C section. But OBGYNs are not trained in breach births anymore. So when they go to medical school, they aren't even taught how to deliver a breech baby. Oh my God. And it's Only one of those midwives where, are. Yeah. And then you lose the, the knowledge where there is like a body of knowledge about how to deliver breech babies that has passed through the mm-hmm. years. Sorry, go ahead. Yes. And it's, I think it's, it's, I think it's, not being, it's being lost by midwives in a lot of yes. uh, cases too. Like in my, yes. in my hometown, there's a midwife named, uh, who you may, may have heard of named, um, oh, my god what is her name uh bonnie bonnie Jean. no 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 it'll this come back so, this is so embarrassing because <laughs> i know it'll come back uh, betty, ann, oh, betty ann oh okay uh, her name is betty ann and she's like a breach specialist and she's the only midwife in canada who's allowed to attend uh breach births alone oh my god wow. so i'm pretty sure so she basically is like a breach specialist she's does does breach births all the time and um and uh otherwise like so if I had been breached I would have uh I would have had to go to hospital um unless it had been a surprise um but I would have had to go to hospital but my midwife could still be there with me and they would have had like on-call uh OBs who are trained in breach oh really which is okay. nice yeah that so is it's nice. like a, That's different. it's kind of in between right it's like yeah. you are like and I think that to some degree, I could have said no to those things, but the, it just puts the midwife in a really awkward position. Mm. Um, right. Sorry, t- Tiger Lily, continue. Anyways, sorry. <laughs> yeah, continue, continue. <laughs> oh my gosh, no. Um, I, I love hearing what it's like in different countries because you have, I have no idea. Um, right. It seems uh-huh. like Canada's pretty similar, but um, I, I forgot where I was. I'm oh, you're trying, trying to remember you're talking about your your midwife. Basically, you had a conversation about what you were going to do when you were breaching. Yes, um, and we, my midwife, we formed this incredible bond. Like right away, I loved her, and I felt so comfortable with her. And like after birth, I was like, "Can we be friends now?" Like, I love you. <laughs> um, and so we had the conversation, and I started listening to podcasts about breach birth, and I knew that it was possible, and that it really wasn't. Um, this big emergency where I would have to go to the hospital. Um, and it's just because OBGYNs, I mentioned that they weren't trained. So it's really just lack of skill from doctors where women can't have breech births in the hospital and they should be able to. Right. So, um, I can, I just told myself in my head, okay, I know that she's going to flip, but if she doesn't, then we're still going to do this at home. And I knew that I would trust my midwife to do it because she had done breach training. Okay. Um, and what did times. she, she, what did she say when you guys her. had that conversation? Was she like, okay, let's do this. Let's try this. Yes. We, we kept saying she's going to flip. Um, and so <laughs> the next week though, we thought that she flipped, she came over and she felt my stomach um, and she felt head down and I was like, so relieved. I thought, oh my God, okay, my baby flipped. We don't even have to worry about this. So I had no idea that she was breached when I went into labor, oh not a clue, God. until literally 30 minutes before she came out. So um, I was 30, I was going to be 40 weeks uh, the next day. So 39 weeks and six days, my water broke, which I didn't expect because they tell you it's not normal for your water to just like break in the movies it'll come out super slow or you go into labor first and then it will break um so I got up me and my husband were in bed and I got up to use the restroom and I sat on the toilet and I heard a pop um it wasn't loud but it was just like a sound where I was like that was weird and then just a gush of water like in into the toilet and so when that happened my heart was like 
oh my God, oh my God, my water just broke. This is crazy because I had been waiting to go into labor. Right. And I understood at that point why women want to get induced because those last days where you're I pregnant know. are so long, long and agonizing. Um, and it is the biggest mental battle. I That was the mental part of still being pregnant and being so uncomfortable and anticipating labor when you haven't been through it was worse than labor oh my god <laughs> like, and you didn't even make worse. it just the 40 weeks like there willow didn't you go past right. 40 i was only one day past okay okay and i i think i was before 40 so luckily i was like okay i'm I, i'm not gonna start freaking out until i get to 40 um but like some people go to like 41 some days and like can you imagine that last week so anyways continue Right. And my midwife was like, I, you're probably going to go to 42 weeks or beyond because 43 weeks is even normal, but a hospital would never let that happen. They're going to say your baby's too big to come out of your vagina, which is hilarious because that's not a thing. (laughs) Um, so I, my water broke and I went to the bed and I looked at my husband and I was like, yo, it's happening. My water just broke. And he jumped out of bed and I was like, no, we have to go back to bed. Like, I probably won't have contractions for a while because it typically takes a couple hours for you to really start going into labor. So I got back into bed and immediately was just, I mean, my contractions came on so fast. I had to get off the bed and onto my knees on the floor. Oh my God. And I was like, okay, this is way faster. It it shocked me because I thought I would have time to kind of like get into the swing of things or set up the birthing pool. Even I didn't, we didn't have time to set up the pool. Um, So I'm so glad we had a big bathtub because that's where I ended up laboring. Um, I mean, they happened immediately and they were so painful because typically you will have pre-labor contractions where it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, you know, it's, it's getting your body warmed up and prepared. And that's what I thought would happen in your head. So basically everything that you think your labor will be, it is never what you think it's going to be. I know. And it's so diverse too. So it's so funny. You like think it's going to be some thing and like some labors are crazy fast and some are really slow and steady. And it's like, you don't really know what to expect. So it's, it's so funny. It always upends your expectations. Always. And I, um, I didn't think I was going to uh, like, I didn't even think I was going to go into labor, which a pro tip. I learned this from um, Mike Cernovich, his wife, Shauna. She just had her baby home birth yesterday. Oh. She told me to drink, um, you know, to drink the red raspberry leaf tea, like during pregnancy, because it helps ripen your cervix. Yep. Um, she, there's a super concentrated um, drink of that. It's like a cup and a half of the red raspberry leaf tea and four cups of water. So, I mean, it's like black, it is so strong. (laughs) Um, she drank that. And then the next day went into labor with her baby. So I did that. And then the next day went into labor. So that works. If you're trying to go into labor and you're a mom listening to this, (laughs) drink that drink and And also your baby will come out. We had this like conversation in the group chat, um, for a while, the, the mom's group chat about like, what, what should you take? And, um, castor oil right wasn't that it willow uh yeah castor oil i mean there's there's a lot of discussion about things um it's there's castor oil is basically like a very powerful laxative yeah and that often stimulates labor yeah um i yeah it's interesting my my midwife said that that was like later in their like induction like natural induction methods yeah yeah, um, and you can use like, I've heard people it. Yeah. use it earlier, but they were like, that's way more intense. Like they would, they said they would, and I don't know, everyone's different, but they said they'd do a stretch and sweep before castor oil. Mm. It's so yes. funny though, because we, I do better. honestly feel like these, because like, me, sorry to interrupt again, I'll let you go back, but I honestly feel like because m- pregnancy and childbirth has been so medicalized, it's almost like this underground network of women, like, like witches sharing their concoctions <laughs> to yes. help each other with natural methods you know and it's just like I love it so much because it's just I really love the feeling of like just regular people helping each other and sharing their their tips and best practices and stuff so um, but it does feel a little bit like we're all just with our little apothecaries um coming up with these different methods but anyways con- continue so you so you took this you drank this um concoction and it got you your labor going 
Yes. So I went into labor. I'm having um, immediate hardcore contractions and I am scared because I'm thinking if this is just my preterm contractions, I am so screwed because they hurt so bad. I was like, and I was already nervous about birth because I don't have a super high pain tolerance. Like I feel like I'm a baby. (laughs) And so um, a lot of moms will be like, I don't have high pain tolerance. I can't, I can't do birth and you completely can. (laughs) Um, So I immediately text my midwife and she is asking me how far apart my contractions are. And you're supposed to call your doula first. Um, But I knew like intuitively, I knew that my baby was going to come out probably fast. Um, So my midwife said, I'm on my way over. And then I called my doula, Emily, and she was an hour and a half away. So I was also thinking, oh my God, what if my baby comes out before she's here? And um, so in my head, I'm just thinking all these things and I'm just getting wrecked with contractions. And they're like pretty close together at this point. They were immediately, they started out 10 minutes apart. They went to six minutes Uh, um, and then they went to four minutes within uh, like half an hour. Oh my God. So I was like, what, what is happening? This is, it was really, I, yeah, it was so fast. Um, So everybody gets there. I'm in the bathtub and I honestly, I thought I would love being in the water and I imagined myself giving birth in the water but I ended up laboring on the toilet. Um, they call it dilation station because your body is used to <laughs> being relaxed. relaxed there. Yes. yes. I, went, I went in a tub for my first and I thought it was going to be like this magical, like feel the wave thing. And I was just like, this isn't any less painful. I'm going to, I'm just, I, wet. I'm like, gonna, also, I'm like, <laughs> sorry. I was like slipping around in the tub, like trying to hold myself up. And I was like, this is, <laughs> yes. And it's always so funny the disconnect between your like magical visioning of what things are going to be like <laughs> and what yeah. it's actually like when you're like, you're actually just an animal, like having to yeah. be feeling, wanting to be comfortable to like let labor progress. Yeah. I, I also hated being in the water and I was born in the water and I had this like like oh it's gonna be so <laughs> bad and I was like I was like it's too hot like it was like just like warm and I was like it's too hot it's terrible I need to move I just like rolled around on the bed honestly yeah. I couldn't I couldn't like be in one in one position I hated it it is hot and during right like during labor you have hot flashes like you'll get super hot and then super, super cold yeah. um and I like had to have a fan on my face while I was in the bathtub because uh. And you get to a point where obviously nothing's going to be comfortable, but you can't even think about moving because you mm-hmm. feel like it's going to make any, any movement will hurt worse. Yeah. yeah. And um, so I, I was in the tub for a little bit, hated it. I puked everywhere uh, or two I puked um, the first one and there. they, oh, it's horrible. You're just, your body's doing the craziest things and you're not even in your body. Like your no. mind is gone you're not there yeah so my midwife caught it she put the the trash can like under my chin right pro I puked Um, (laughs) thank god she's yes she was such a pro um and so then I got on the toilet and this whole thing my entire labor was 12 hours so when we thought the baby was coming like immediately that did not happen my labor was just so it just kept going on like that for 12 hours Yes. At one point I fell asleep in the bathtub. So like in between contractions, you would fall asleep. Um, and I just, I kind of disappeared. I don't remember it being 12 hours. It seemed so much faster, but right. also like the longest day of my entire life. Um, and so I, but we were kind of, I kept thinking in my head, why is it taking so long? Because I could feel the pressure so much. And, but I would reach up and hopefully this isn't TMI, but, um, I would reach up to see if I could feel her head because the, like, oh my gosh, I felt like I could feel her coming out. Right. Um, but I couldn't feel anything hard, like what a head would be. I felt something soft. Um, and I was like, is that my cervix? Like, I don't know. Like, you don't know what it feels like up there. So I was like, what is this like soft thing? Um, and I didn't get checked. Like I, I kept telling Lauren, I didn't want to get checked. I didn't have any hands 
like up my vagina my entire pregnancy and yes. for some reason I was like priding myself on that I was like, I'm not <laughs> gonna get checked I'm just gonna let her come out right um so at one point I when I felt that I said okay Lauren I need you to check me because this doesn't feel like a head but I could feel like you feel like you have to like poop really bad yes <laughs> like yes. the pressure sure down there just gets crazy and so um I got on the bed and she checked me and like I'm looking at her face and she makes this face oh god and um I like I I said oh my god I'm about to have another contraction so I jumped off the bed to get back in the pool and when I got back in the pool um there was like meconium down my leg oh my god and Lauren my midwife looked at me and she goes Mel I need you to get back on the bed because I think what I felt was not your baby's head. Um, and she goes, and you're also, you're like at a tent, you're fully dilated. Oh my like, God. and your cervix is not there. She mm-hmm. said, something's there, but it's not a head. And so oh. I immediately, I look at my doula with like tears in my eyes and I'm oh like, God. Emily, what do I do? And she's standing there with me at Lauren and we're all three, like, we're all like kind of like this tight knit group. And I didn't want anybody at my birth, but them. Yeah. Um, and then my, my mom and my husband and my mom wasn't there. She was driving from Tulsa to oh Austin. Oh my God. Um, and so she's like speeding. It's a seven hour drive. And I knew she wasn't going to make it. Um, and so it's just us three. And she goes, Mel, your baby's breech. That's your baby's butt. Um, and it's low. And I was like, I looked at them and I go, oh my God, uh, do I have to go to the hospital? Like I should go to the hospital because you're not thinking in your brain. And yes. so that's why it's so important to tell them your birth plan. So yes. your doula keeps you like accountable and helps you make those decisions. So I'm like, Emily, do I need to go to the hospital? And they, Lauren's like, I've never done a breech birth before, but I know that we can do this. <gasps> and so the best way to have a breech birth is butt first instead of feet. Okay. Um, because there's more gravity and it's just safer. It's like the safest, best possible breech birth ever as if it's their butt. And it was, so that kind of gave me some peace. Um, and I'm thinking about, it. I'm like, no, I need to go to the hospital. And she's um, already like down the birth canal. So it's not like you could go to the hospital and I don't know right. like, the, the technicalities at this point, like whether or not you could even pull off a C-section at this point, but it's really nice that they, they were like, let's try to do this because, you don't really know at that moment. I mean, it, that's really like the, the key moment. Like, what do we do at this moment? And they were like, okay, let's try this. So that's amazing. Oh yeah. And it was like, I was about to hit transition in like two minutes. Oh. Um, and I would, yeah, there's no way I would have made it to the hospital. I would have been like sitting on her because she was, and I, I swear she was like a, a finger. Like I could, I could feel her. She was so low. And so I kept thinking, okay, she's low enough where I can do this. Like I've been doing this for hours. I wanted to give up. And then I, at one point I remember being, when you hit transition, my midwife was like, you'll know because you think you're going to die and you will (laughs) just keep saying that you can't do this. So I hit that point and I was scared. And so Emily went to my husband, Travis, and was like, the baby's breech, we can do this. It's just a you know, it's different and it doesn't happen often. So my midwife called in some other midwives who showed up um, that have been at a breech birth to just be there for support, which was okay. amazing. And what did your so husband say? By the end of it, did he say anything or he was just like, you guys, I trust this team. He did. He trusted them and he trusted me. And he like the, the entire pregnancy, he was like, this is your body and your baby. And like, I want you to labor how you want to labor. So Uh, he was nervous, but he also doesn't trust hospitals. He trusted us being at home more than going to a hospital, which thank God. Um, So Lauren's like, okay, your baby's breech. We're going to do this. And it kind of just changed the entire, the entire mood of, of everything, because I knew that I had to get my shit together mentally to birth this baby um, and like stop freaking out because she was so close um so I got on the toilet and I sat there for probably half an hour and I could feel my body I didn't push 
I didn't push one time. My body was pushing her out on its own. Yeah. Um, and it's called fetal people, ejection reflex. Yeah. I think there people don't realize like something like the, the pounds per square inch of pressure is something like the, the amount of like a semi truck tire. It like you're oh my gosh, yes. uh, so hard. There's so much pressure where it's like you, you basically could get away with just not pushing and you're oh my gosh. still eject the baby. <laughs> But it's not just because of it's I mean, I think that everyone had like I've heard stories of women who have literally felt no urge to push the whole time and they've had to push like themselves. But um, but it's also like mm-hmm. it's not just it's not just the amount of pressure. It's like your body will literally do it on its own. Like yeah. your body will go through the pushing motions. Yep. It's crazy. Like it's crazy that you could even be unconscious and your body would push your baby out. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and it, it almost feels like you're, I've heard someone describe it as throwing up backwards and that's like the best way yes. that I can. Like, yes. I was it. just writing out my birth story and I was like, it was like vomiting. Yeah. Because, and you know what? I've said that the to other people, way. Yeah. I've said that to people before too, where it, it feels like a natural urge. It's not an unnatural pain, like breaking your arm or something like that. It's an, it's like the natural, your body is going through this pain that it has to go through. And then you'll feel better on the other side. It's like the pain and then relief um, kind of feeling. Yes. Oh my gosh. And I, uh, I, in that moment, you kind of have this rush of adrenaline You're because your body's like, okay, your baby's about to come out um, and it, it's doing it for you, but you get this uh, kind of like mental clarity where before you're just, you're a zombie, you're not in your body. Um, Cause before that I was saying, take me to the hospital give me an epidural I was saying <laughs> everything possible I was like I get me out of here I was like I need someone to knock me out I can't do this I can't do this yep. um because I felt like my body was being ripped in half like it was right. it was crazy and I had been following this Instagram account called pain-free birth I don't know if you guys follow that oh, or no. not. <laughs> but it was about how birth is painless and it's not pain it's oh, pressure no. and blah 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 and I was like these are bakers I was like this is not <laughs> true like I had like rose colored glasses on about labor yeah and um it was it was not pain-free at all um but I'm glad it shouldn't be pain-free it was it was this like refining process and it just like it like beats you down to nothing and then you realize that you can go beyond the point where you didn't think you could and so um I'm sitting on the toilet and I reach up and an inch like I can feel her but like just an inch up there and I, I tell Lauren I say can you come feel and make sure that this is like as low as I think she is and so Lauren comes in and she feels and she goes yep get ready she's coming and so a, a breech babies come out faster um than head down babies because I guess like the, when your baby comes head down, its head has to be kind of molded to um, your pelvis to come out. Um, so she starts getting everything ready on the bathroom floor and I'm refusing to get off the toilet because it's the only place where I've been able to like feel any progress. relief yeah. at all and, and progress exactly. And she, she's like, Mel, I can't catch your baby in the toilet. Like I can't reach my hands into the toilet. And I was like, yes, you can. <laughs> like I'm not getting off the toilet you can't make me and my doula Emily is like Mel get off the toilet and get on the floor and so um, you go I got on, on my fours? hands and knees okay yeah I tried and it was horrible pain I was like no this is not the position I'm supposed to be in I needed to be in a sitting position to have that like gravity okay um because she was already so low so my midwife had a birthing stool um and it's like this kind of horseshoe shaped thing and so I I sat on that and it kind of had the same like toilet sensation where you're sitting yes um and you can use your arms to kind of like hold you up so that is where I ended up like that's where she came out so I'm I'm on the birthing stool and once I could feel like you could I could feel her butt like trying to come out um and that in, in that moment was the first time where I felt like I actually needed to push. And I said, guys, I need to push. And so Lauren and my doula Emily are there on the bathroom floor with me. And they're like, okay, you can start pushing. And so I'm like, I'm 
pushing and I'm screaming and I'm grunting. And I thought I was going to be like super quiet, like a beautiful birther. Not the case. (laughs) I was like, like I made sounds that like only an animal could make. And I didn't even know I could make it. And so I look up and I, her butt is halfway out and it's like, it's called the ring of fire. And my God, is it a ring of fire? I was like, what? It's happening to me. Ring of fire, and I, like just the pressure and stretching of all of the skin. Yes, as, and as, it's like a burning, yes. like the most intense rug burn of your life. <laughs> um, and so she's coming in, in and out, and your baby will do that. And I kept getting pissed. I was like, she keeps going back up, right? Um, but your body does that to slowly stretch out your perineum um, and to slowly stretch you out so you don't tear it's like its own um like mechanism of to help your body not tear which is just another amazing thing yep and um so she kept slowly coming out and I look up at one point she's halfway out and um she's like she's all smashed and I look up and my mom walked in the door she made it in the last like 10 minutes and she's standing there and it just gave me this feeling of like you know when your mom's like you want your mommy and like you're in this craziest phase of your life and she walked in the door and I look up and behind my mom there's four other midwives that showed up to help oh my god Um, and my husband's standing there and I just look up and it's like this whole team around me of people just like and it was and it was light outside there was light streaming into the bathroom oh and God. it was like the clouds parted yeah. and i knew that i had it in me to keep going because before i kept saying like i can't do this my body's about to rip in half i don't know how i'm going to get her out um so i like it gave me that boost of like okay let's go it was like a boost of oxytocin almost yes. and so i give one last push of every single amount of strength i have in me like i've never tried to do I've never used that amount of force or strength. And I don't even know if it was really me, but I push her out. And so her feet fall out and she's hanging, uh, she's hanging out of me. So her feet are out, but her head is still in oh. and her arms are up above her head. So she's hanging there and I try to pull her out, um, but she's not coming out. And my midwife's like, okay, just, just hang out for a little bit. Um, and she feels her heartbeat and then uh, something happens where Lauren, the other midwives rush in and they pull, they, they reach in and they pull her arms out and then pull her head out because um, she was stuck. Her arms had her stuck and the cord was wrapped around her neck two times. So she kind of like hung herself. Wow. Um, and so she came out not breathing. She, they, they pulled her out. They put her in my arms and she was completely limp and lifeless, not moving. And she was blue. Oh um, and that moment my husband's in there I'm like looking at my baby and she doesn't even look alive and um they start doing the resuscitations on her and like squeezing her chest and um giving her oxygen but her eyes are wide open and she's staring at me it makes me cry (laughs) she's um she's just like looking at me and we're looking at each other and my midwife's like talk to your baby talk to your baby like let her hear your voice and so I'm just like talking to her and I'm looking at her and we're just like staring at each other in this like it's like time stops um and I see her trying to breathe and she finally breathes she like lets out this like gasp um and she doesn't even cry but she's just like she starts breathing and then I put her in my arms um and I just remember holding her and I started bleeding out I hemorrhaged and I didn't even know um so my midwife is like um trying to help me clot they they gave me these like herbs which is amazing because midwives are so holistic they were like let's give you these herbs um and when you do when you do hemorrhage they have a uh they give you a shot of pitocin which I was like I do not want that but it's the smallest amount possible yes um and it's better than dying yeah (laughs) yeah I had that too with my first and at first I was like why are you giving me this I didn't even feel it I was like I don't care if as long right. as it makes it so that yeah. I'm healthy and safe enough to be here with my baby and like conscious, then it's fine. I can handle it. Yeah, I had exactly. They gave me two shots of pitocin to try and get my placenta out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah, and that's still less. The two shots is still less than what they give you to induce labor. Yeah. Um. And I, so I just was like, okay, I trust my midwife. It's fine. And she had warned me about that. She was like, hey, we might have to give you if you hemorrhage, we give you a tiny dose. So, um, they're doing that. And then 
I, they had to pull my placenta out, which I couldn't even feel because I was just out of it. And I, yeah. I also lost so much blood that you, I kind of wasn't all there. <laughs> I'm just like the whole, making sure my baby's breathing. Um, so they had to finish like, uh, like making sure I stopped bleeding and so my husband took the baby they made him get in bed with his shirt off and like be yeah. skin to skin with her and I they put me in the shower and it's crazy the team just like they start cleaning everything they start cleaning the floors they clean the bathtub they strip your bed of the sheets mm -hmm. they do a load of laundry so they're all just like they just go in unison of cleaning everything up and everyone's happy and my mom's there and they're showering me off um and I know that my baby's safe in bed with my husband oh. and it was just so did amazing. They stop the, did they stop the, had they stopped the hemorrh hemorrhaging? They did. They stopped it really fast. Okay. Um, awesome. And then I like, I had no idea it was happening. I just was so, and the, the cool thing about if any moms are listening, thinking this sounds freaking miserable and insane <laughs> when your baby's out it stops like the pain stops immediately it's yes. gone and you can't even remember it like you can't feel it and all you feel is the most amazing relief and happiness that you will ever experience I mean I just in that moment your body floods you with oxytocin and you can just be so happy even if your body is actually in pain you almost can't feel it no so I, I just I, push I, the I baby would just out say, backwards yeah well and oh sorry go ahead finish that Oh no, I was just saying, I had just pushed a baby out backwards and I didn't care, which was crazy because wow. she, like, she came out with her butt, but like my body just did it perfectly. And she, and normally I, I know I say breach is safe, even though my baby came out not breathing, it's just because the cord was wrapped around yeah. twice and we let her hang there a little bit longer than okay. like than normal. Um, Sorry. but she was here and she's perfect. And I had no complications either. Um, besides the hemorrhage, which is also pretty common, honestly. Um, yes. um, and and so, I would just, yeah, I would just add that, like, um, for people listening and thinking like, this is an insane journey. I'd so much rather like, just have it where I get an epidural or a C-section or whatever. The, the, the roller coaster on the, on the end of labor, um, is equally as euphoric on the other side once the baby comes out like the the crazy pain yeah. and like fear and uncertainty is matched by the the happiness and euphoria on the other side and not that you can't feel euphoria if you have like a c-section but i i would i would make the argument that you are feeling it all more unmedicated and um there was nothing there ha has never been anything that matches that feeling of euphoria in my life than that Ever. moment, like when the baby comes out and you're holding it and you're you like you did this thing and you're just you can't believe it and you're just like the gratitude of the universe I don't know it's just I mean obviously very hard to describe it's like the infinite drug trip I mean it's just unbelievable and so I think I think for it's like a I think a lot of people don't realize this though but like when you medicalize it and try to control it like you're you're just taking that part of the experience away, you know, whereas like you're exactly you're, you're missing out on the fullness of the human experience, you know? Yes. I love that. I love that you said that because as, as ridiculous as the labor was, which 12 hours is supposedly a short labor for a first time right. labor. Um, I, your body does this crazy thing and it's, and it's so by design, God did not skip a beat but you forget, you forget the pain within like on the third day, right after I gave birth, I said, I'm never doing this again. I was like, <laughs> I will never, ever, ever do this again. I don't know how people have multiple babies. And on the third day, I was like, I would have another baby. I was like, I would go through labor again, a hundred times. It was that amazing. Like as painful as it was, it's that amazing after yeah. that you want to do it again. And it's so stupid because your body literally forgets the pain and it you'll it'll tell yourself it wasn't that bad <laughs> which is so <laughs> ridiculous um so yeah now I'm like I'm like craving birth and it's something that God gave <laughs> women and you don't when your birth is like this traumatic like medicalized traumatic hospital experience um you don't get that same flood of emotions you really don't and um it 
it just breaks my heart for for women that have had to go through that and there is you can always experience it on your next birth if you choose to and I just like I I want women to know that they can have a safe home birth and crawl into their bed in their own home after and yeah. cuddle your baby and not be woken up every three hours in the night by a nurse who wants to yeah. like do that press thing on your stomach no. <laughs> like you don't have to go through that I have to say I I like I I had a weird experience with this because uh, I had uh, like my my daughter was born at home or at my mom's house rather um, but like uh, like perfectly she was great everything was great but uh, my placenta like what just wouldn't come out and the cord separated and I ended up having to to do like an emergency transfer to the hospital on my own without my baby um, oh my gosh and uh, which like it was like honestly like in the moment I, I was like I was I was just like okay whatever like we're just we're just gonna do what has to be done um and I ended up having they like they ended up like uh, giving me giving me drugs and putting and basically just like manually removing the placenta which was like I had an insane placenta it had like fought like the the cord was not properly attached like the whole time Oh. It was like, it was like filament. It was basically like the like normal external casing of the placenta. And then like, there was like, I think like an inch or two of like, just like the internal filament without the casing attaching it. And then it had like oh. five lobes off of the main placenta. Oh. Um, and so I was really lucky that we were able <laughs> to do that. And, and it's like, it's hard to say, who knows, maybe my midwife would have been able to do it at home if, if that had been the only thing, but like, it was like I had a pr- I was in a pretty dangerous situation and like you can I would just say like I I definitely I'm I I just want to say that like I think that a lot of the way the hospital handles birth is not good but definitely having hospitals is a huge blessing I and like yes. I wish I also yes. wish that honestly you could have a better like it was more common to have a good birth in a hospital yeah so like my baby right for a while she's I heard the baby uh, hiccups. I love it's the good baby to hiccups. it's perfect She's to have the baby sound. Yelling. I would I yeah. would echo what you said, Willow. Like honestly, my third birth at home was the most like um like emotional because my older daughter was present when my youngest yeah. was born, and it was just like so amazing to not when you have older kids to not leave and have to worry about like who's gonna care okay. for them and then be away from them for two days and then they're yeah. Like they don't see the integration of like the pregnancy to birth to like sister. Um, yeah. But that, but the first one, I think in the hospital where they left me alone um, was my least stressful because it was like mm-hmm. having a home birth, but then in a setting where if anything went wrong, I knew I would have the every single, yeah. um, you know, thing that I needed. Yeah. So I, I think there's pluses and minuses to both, but I definitely like do agree with you that it's very nice that we have like Pitocin to stop a hemorrhaging. It's very nice that we have, yeah. you know, if, mm-hmm. if there is an insane uh, situation that like we have that medical um, backup, but, but mm-hmm. like, it's always pluses and minuses. It's always a trade-off. Like if, you know, some, yeah. for, for so many people, if you go the whole hospital route with an OBGYN the whole time, yeah, um, that it's just a over interventionist. That's just the culture. Yeah. And I would say, if if you do like I think that there are good reasons to do a hospital birth I think just feeling scared is a good reason like if you can't work through that it's better to like if you're gonna feel more relaxed being at a hospital do that if you're gonna feel stressed being at home don't do it because it's like it's like what what you want to avoid is having like anxiety it's being stressed during labor right and for me like I would have been I'm so grateful that I was able to have a home birth and also that I was able to go to the hospital after um, because like it like I would just have been so stressed trying to deliver in a hospital I would have been so stressed I like I can't I truly can't imagine what it would have been like but you know everybody is different and if you are gonna like you know if you're gonna be at home being like terrified (laughs) and and like not not like and you're not able to like work through that during pregnancy then I would just say go and just just like just understand how hospitals operate understand like what they're going to push on you and definitely if you're going to do a hospital I think like even more important to have a doula because they will she she will advocate for you you know like her job is to 
is to be your your voice and to like you know basically be your like bodyguard (laughs) exactly bodyguard is the perfect word they protect you from like your doctor and anyone that would want to like change your medical decision and if you're yeah and if you're going meet your doctors find out what their policies are for c-sections find out what their policies are for breech birth for like just everything and try and get like try and get as much as possible like just a sense for what it's going to be like before you you go so that you can like relax there yeah I'm just saying I think that yeah I think that there's like and and you know they're not all hospitals are the same too it's like some hospitals are actually have pretty good policies a lot of them are horrendous Um, but find out what your individual uh hospital policy is like and just try and um yeah just try and like be be vigilant (laughs) yes And, and and I would just add to that like um I, for my second baby's birth, I was like extremely informed and decided to have it in the hospital because I had a good time with the first one. And I went in and I interviewed everybody at the hospital. I asked the nurses what the policies were. I was like all on top of it, PhD in sociology. Like I can research this stuff. I'm going to figure out, I'm going to have my birth plan. And then when I got there, it was totally different than what they said. So that's another thing that's really shitty is just like, I said, like, when I get here, what, what's the process? And they were like, yeah, you just, you know, you come in and you get into a room. And I didn't realize I was going to get stuck in like a triage room for 30 minutes. Oh and like, I was, and I was like, not in a birthing suite. They had to mon- put one of those monitors around my belly, which I didn't want. And I was like, I didn't, you know, no one told me that this was like the policy. Like, I want this monitor off me. I want to move around. I need to get into a birthing suite. Like, all of that kind of stuff. So it was just really annoying because every hospital is different. And I think it also depends on what nurses you get and whether or not they have mm-hmm. like a God complex. <laughs> Cause yeah. I think some nurses are right. just like, so, so nasty can be very nasty and just be like, this is the policy. I'm not gonna, you know, very Nazi about it. Um, but anyways, um, so, okay. That was so awesome. I'm so glad you shared that story. I had chills throughout. Um, it was, it's so good to hear positive um, visions of birth and, and not just like positive, but like holistic, like this is, this is a holistic experience. This is, this is a very common experience. It's one we share with most of our ancestors. Um, and it's nice to hear, it's not just a horror show, you know, and it's not just, um, a terrible experience overall, but it's like the gamut. It's crazy. It's like you run the whole, um, the, the whole spectrum of human emotion happens throughout labor. Um, so yeah, any last thoughts or comments, um, before we wrap up Tiger Lily? Um, honestly, if any moms are listening that to just research both options, the hospital closest to you, ask your OBGYN a million questions of how if they have any natural approach to birth or if they automatically induce ask as many questions as possible and then interview a midwife just to see if you like them and connect with them um and just give yourself options so that you and your your intuition can figure out what decision is best for you because just like willow said if you are going to feel more safe and comfortable in a hospital after everything that you've learned then give birth in a hospital just have a doula so that they can advocate for you and say no when you're not in the right mind to say no right um I would also recommend I don't know if you like this book Ina May's Guide to Childbirth did you read that Tiger Lily oh yes um reading birth stories and listening to birth stories on podcasts (laughs) is what I did my whole labor and it helped me so much because it's fun to hear other people's birth stories yeah so cool and then you can learn like what what's common what's uncommon um and that like and that it's all over the place and that you know what whichever way it happens is you know how it was gonna happen I had this very woo woo um doula before my third birth and she was just like this is her story. This isn't your, this isn't necessarily just your story having her, this is her story. Um, and so whatever her story is and how she comes out, like that's, that's going to be her story. And that's like what she comes with, what she brings into the world. And I was, I was like, that was really nice to hear before. I love that. Like just letting go, like, this is going to be her story. This is how she comes into the world. And it's going to determine who she is and who she is, is already who she is, you know, in, in the belly. So, um, 
that was that was Ooh, that gave me chills i'm gonna uh, use that okay um so all right i know we we all have uh little ones to take care of so i'll let everybody go um but i just want to thank you so much both of you guys for like sharing so much and this is yeah i totally have chills this was a really lovely conversation and hopefully it's um empowers some women to think differently about um pregnancy and, and childbirth Yay. Thank you so much for having me. It was so good to talk to you guys. Yeah. Thanks, Ashley. Okay. Bye guys. See, see y'all on Twitter. Bye. Bye. See <laughs> Bye. Ya.